All right, it's 5.30, let's go and get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. How's, uh, how's everyone doing today? Doing good, good to hear. Okay, um, so today, uh, I, you'll probably only hear me talk for, for about half today. And so what I wanted to do today is we're gonna finish up our direct stiffness code. Um, so we left off last time uh, filling in the element stiffness matrices. So we'll go ahead and finish that up today. Uh, we'll talk about assembly. And so uh, we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about that. Uh, and then from there, we just have the boundary conditions and the solution. So, you know, we'll finish this up today. I think probably only pick, take about half time. Um, so I wanted to finish the frame code together um, just so that, you know, you have a full working code, kind of an example uh, with every every section of the code kind of explained in terms of how it works. Um, and then afterwards, afterwards, what I want you to do is, uh, um, is the assignment. And so the assignment, uh, which is going to be, it's going to be rolled into the next uh, activity. So after the midterm next week, next Thursday, we're going to be doing another ANTIS activity. And so as part of the ANSYS activity, there's gonna be an additional problem where you're gonna write a, uh, a trust code. And so you're gonna write a code that's very similar to this, uh, a direct stiffness code, but instead of a frame, um, you're gonna be solving a 2D truss. And so uh, we'll be working on that for the, for the rest of today uh, as well, okay? Okay, so kind of like a hybrid today, you know, I know because, you know, next Tuesday is the midterm. So, um, you know, I didn't want to cover too, too much new information. And so that's, that's the plan for, uh, that's the plan for today. Okay. All right. Any questions on anything before we get started for today? Oh, also, I wanted to announce I, I did post the solutions to the past two homeworks, and so that is uh, that is up for you on the Canvas site. So if you go to week seven, the week seven page on Canvas, you should see the solutions for uh, homework one, as well as the direct stiffness problems for um, the, the the answers activity. So basically, all the truss, spring, beam, and frame problems, they will have solutions on. Okay, all right, so let's uh, go ahead and pick up where we left off. And I don't know if I did that. Okay, so last time we were here, you know, we were working on this code, right? And the idea is that, you know, once we finish writing this code, this will be kind of a general code that we can use to solve um, 2D frame problems, okay? And so last time, you know, we kind of spent, we kind of, we kind of spent the majority of the last time talking about just the general structure of the code, uh, we talked about a lot of the data structures, uh, a lot of the matrices and vectors uh, that we're using in this code. And then we were kind of in the middle of kind of filling in kind of the, the, the meat of the code or a lot of the, the implementation, okay? Because now that we have all the data structures and all of the matrices and all the vectors set up, you know, we can now use them to, uh, to actually compute our, our code, okay? Uh, so let's finish that first. And so, you know, I think we left off last time we were in this loop right here. Uh, so in this loop, we were computing the element stiffness matrices for each element, okay? 
Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to finish this up right now. And so uh, it'll take me about 10 minutes, but, you know, I'll give you guys maybe, you know, 15 minutes to kind of fill this in. Um, so remember, you know, we're building this element stiffness matrix row by row. Right? So we have the first row of the element stiffness matrix here. Um, so you can see here that's row one, 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 two, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Okay. So that corresponds to all six entries in the first row here. Okay. Then we have the second row in the matrix. So that's two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six. Okay. So you can see here that I've, I've labeled each row. Okay. So um, if you haven't done so already, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the entries in this matrix. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be doing that as well. Okay. Um, and make sure to utilize the symmetry of the matrix to your advantage. So any, any entry that has a symmetric um, counterpart, um, you know, make sure you utilize that just, kind of, just to kind of save yourself some type. Okay. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get to this. this entry here is A times S. Make sure you're utilizing. So remember, we define these uh, variables C and S as cosine of the angle and sine of the angle. So those those correspond to these here. And then the uh, the material properties E, A, I, and L they correspond to uh, those properties for that element. Have done this before. So, <laughs> but if you, if you guys are kind of following along too, then you know, just a kind of uh, These later entries here, you can see that I'm just applying the symmetry. So I, I know that I've already um, kind of uh, filled in the first three rows. So I can fill in the first three entries here. So
All right, so once you finish that, you know, it, it does take a bit of time, you know, just because you're kind of copying this uh, this matrix here, but, uh, you know, you should have everything done. Okay, so um, can I remind you, so question is, uh, what is the third input for K element? Yeah, good question. So, you know, we're, we're building these kind of uh, two two dimensional matrices, right? So these matrices are kind of two dimensional structures. So they have kind of a, a length and a width, right? But, you know, we, we need to compute one element stiffness matrix per element. And, uh, you know, we might have structures with a lot of different elements. And so this third entry kind of allows us to store multiple stiffness matrices for multiple elements, right? Um, because, you know, if, if you were to kind of do this kind of naively, and so if you were to kind of uh, do this uh, um, by hand, you may define multiple element stiffness matrices like this, right? So maybe the, the element stiffness matrix of the first element would be K1. The second element stiffness matrix would be K2. And the third one would be zeros six by six, right? So that's K3, right? Um, so if, if you were to kind of do this by hand, that's, that's, that's essentially what you would do, right? So you do this problem by hand, you make three separate matrices and you fill them in based on this, uh, based on this formula here. But, you know, we're, right, we're trying to write this code to be as general as possible. So, you know, if we're given a structure with more than, uh, with more than three elements, so let's say that we added two elements like this, right? So we added, we kind of made it into a house, right? So we have five elements instead. We we want our code to be as flexible as we can, so that we can make kind of the least amount of changes as, as possible. Um, and so if we were to if we were to implement it like this, then we'd have to you know copy a whole bunch of code and uh, to compute the element stiffness matrices, and and we wouldn't know how many we have to do. But by kind of writing it inside a loop and kind of adding this third index here, where this third index this third input is kind of the uh, um, you can kind of think of it as the element number then we kind of save ourselves that trouble. So, you know, we can compute the element stiffness matrices for as many elements as we as we can, or as we want to, uh, depending on our structure. So kind of the analogy that I like to use here is kind of like a filing cabinet. So each file in a filing cabinet, you can think of it as kind of one element stiffness matrix, right? And then each file is for a separate element. And so, you know, let's say that we compute it for element one, element two, element three, okay? All these are different files in that format, and so this is this is this this numbering system for which element that we're on. That's what this that's what this third input in here is. Okay. So for this loop, you're going to see all of them be IEL, which is the loop index up, up here. Right? Because we're looping, what we're doing is we're looping over all the elements, and we're assigning the properties, we're assigning the entries of the element stiffness matrix for that particular element. All right, if you wanted to see my code a bit more. Actually, let me let me make the form a little bit bigger here. Yeah. yeah, so I'll give you I'll give you guys a few more minutes just to kind of fill this in.
You want to be careful about your parentheses a little bit too. A little bit confused sometimes. All right, so how's everyone doing? Everyone able to fill in, fill in typing in the element shift matrices? Okay. The, the hard thing about programming that, that I think kind of frustrates a lot of people is that oftentimes it's, it's really hard to check your work to make sure that you're, you're coding okay uh, until the program is kind of fully complete. And so, um, you know, and there, there are some things that you can do. So there are some things that you can do to kind of check your work midway. Uh, but a lot of times a program is not complete until it's kind of fully done. Um, but the issue with that is that if there if there are issues, if there if, if you're getting errors or if you're getting um, you know not the result that you want, it makes it very difficult to kind of see or could kind of debug it and find where the error is. Because um, if you wrote a, a large piece of code, theoretically that error could be almost anywhere. So um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so now that we're done with the element stiffness matrix, oh one one final thing before we go, right? Um, so. If you'll notice here at the very end right here, I'm I'm multiplying everything that we just computed by E over L, okay? Okay, so this E over L, if you look at kind of our formula for the uh, the stiffness matrix for a frame, you can see that it's there's an E over L in front of here. It's very easy to miss, especially when, after you spent, you know, 20 minutes kind of filling in all the other entries. But in order for it to be correct, you know, you need to multiply this, this E over L. So that's what this does here. And so if, if you're unfamiliar with this notation, and so if, you, if you've never seen this kind of colon notation here, uh, what that colon basically does is that it tells MATLAB to apply this to every element in this dimension. Because what, what we've just defined is, you know, we've, we've kind of meticulously defined every entry in a six by six matrix, right? And so this E over L, we want to multiply that by every single entry in here, all 36 entries. Okay? And so by using two columns here, what we're saying is that, all right, MATLAB, take, take every entry in this dimension, all six entries, take every entry in the other dimension, six, right? So 36 entries, and then multiply it by E over L, okay? Which is the Young's modulus divided by the length of that, of that element, okay? Okay. So that's that's how you add kind of a, a a multiplication factor or a scaling factor at the end, uh, like that. Okay. All right. So let's get to assembly. So assembly, uh, you know, in terms of logic, this is probably the uh, um, the more difficult um, part of the uh, of the code. Okay. Okay. So let's let's kind of take a step back and think about kind of our, our standard direct stiffness approach, right? And so in our standard direct stiffness approach, you know, after we're done writing all the element stiffness matrices, we now have to assemble them all together. So that means putting them into one kind of global matrix that includes all of the degrees of freedom, right? All the displacements, all the rotations, things like that, okay? So that's what this loop does. And so we have, we're gonna have one loop here and you can see again, we're looping over all the elements. So we're, we're looping over, um, you know, for each element one by one. And for each element, we're gonna insert um, the element stiffness matrix into the appropriate spot in the global system. Okay. Okay. So for to do this, we're going to need some um, some information from data structures that we defined last time. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we're going to need here is the connectivity matrix. Right? Remember the connectivity matrix. Um, you know, if you remember from last time, this is a matrix that tells us which element is connected to which node. So it's kind of like you know, you have a certain element. It tells you which node to, they're connected to. Okay. Which nodes for, for each element? Okay. So there's two entries, right? So because each of our each of our elements here have two nodes attached to it. So there is a lower numbered node, so that's n1, and then a higher numbered node n2. So these are things that we set manually at, at the very beginning, but now we're actually going to start to use it. Okay. Okay, 
So now that we have the uh, um, the nodes, right? We next next thing we need to do next thing we need to do is we need to compute the starting indices um, of where to actually plug in these elements into the into the global stiffness system. Okay. Okay. So what do I mean by that? So let me go ahead and draw a, a matrix here. Okay. So this would be our global matrix, and so this would be for this problem it would be a twelve by twelve. Right, and so let's let's think about how we typically order the degrees of freedom on this matrix. Right, so if we start with with uh, node one, we have dx one, dx two, theta. Uh, oh, sorry, dx one, dy one, dx one, dy one, theta one. Okay. So we list out all the degrees of freedom for node one. And then we have dx2, dy2, theta2, okay? So then we have all the degrees of freedom for node two, and then dx3, dy3, theta3. So I'm only gonna go up to node three just because that's that's how much room I have here, okay? Okay, so, you know, the way, the way that we, the way, the way, the way that we, you know, structure our stiffness matrix is like this, right? Let's 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 number these in terms of the 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 column number for each of these, right? So dx one is in column one, dy one is in column two, theta one is in column three, okay. Dx two is in column four, dy two is in column five. I don't know why you're about the nine. Theta two is in column six, dx three is in column seven dy3 is in column eight, and theta3 is in column nine, okay? Okay, so let's say that we're inserting the uh, the element stiffness matrix for a certain element, and this element is connected to nodes one. And uh, let's say, and node three, okay, just as an example. I know I know we don't have an element like that in this in this problem, but let's say that we're, we're doing an element like that, okay? And so our element stiffness matrix here is six by six. Okay. Okay. And so this next part here is to insert this into the appropriate locations. And so if we if we were to do this kind of by hand, right? So we have dx1, dy1, theta1, dx3, dy3, theta3, okay? Right, we know that if we were to insert this, we would have to go in this portion right here. So all the node one quantities together, okay. Then we have all the node three quantities together like this, okay. Then like this, then like this, right. So that's how we would insert this by hand. So we need to basically take this logic or take this uh, uh, take this procedure and encode it in a way that a computer will understand. Okay, that's what that's what the point of this is right here. Okay, All right, actually, let me leave that part up and let me just erase this part right here. Okay, so that's where these two new variables come in. So I have IND one and IND two. Okay, so if you read the tooltip for these uh, for these two variables here, is that these compute the starting indices for the locations to put this element stiffness matrix into the global system, okay? So I have one of these written for you already. So it's one plus three times N minus one. Okay, so let's continue this example. So let's say that we're, we're doing node one right here, okay? For node one, we're gonna start putting things in row one and column one, right? So row one, column one. So that's kind of like our starting. And so we want we want this IND one to indicate this location or this starting point right here. Okay. And so if we if we plug in N1, so let's say N1 is equal to one, because okay, that because N1 can correspond to node one here, right? So if we plug in N1 is equal to one right here. So we have one plus three times one minus one. One minus one is zero. So zero times three is zero. And so for that, this would be equal to, to one right here. Okay. So that tells us that because this this uh, this element here is connected to node one, we need to start in the first row in the first column here, right? And then we're going to write out kind of three rows of, of stuff here. Okay. 
we need to find the exact same thing. So the exact same starting point for the other node. Okay. So let's say that N2 here is equal to three, right? So let's say, let's just say for the sake of argument, this element here is connected to node three. Okay. That means, right? If we look at the starting point for all of the, all of the node three parts here, we can see here that it starts in column seven. Okay. And, you know, I didn't write the rows here, but, you know, you can, we can see that we're going to start in column seven right here as well, or row seven. So that's everything to do with the with the second node, right? And so this so this entry right here, the location of this would be row seven, column seven. Okay. So we need that information. We need to tell MATLAB that our starting point for the second node is going to be row seven and column seven here. Okay. So let's write this code together. So you know, let's let's use the same format as above. So let's do one plus three times. Okay. Instead of N1 minus one, I'm gonna do N3 minus one, or N2, excuse me, okay? Because this N2 is, is what we retrieve from the connectivity matrix, right? Okay, and so let's let's plug in here just to verify that this does exactly what we think it's gonna do, right? So ideally this should equal to seven. So that's, that's where we wanna start for, for node three, okay? So if we plug in one plus three times, N2 in this theoretical situation is equal to three, okay? So we have one plus three times three minus one, three minus one is two, two times three is six, one plus that is seven, okay? All right, so this, so these IND variables, they, they serve a very important purpose because they, they basically tell us where in the matrix we need to start inserting um, entries, okay? Okay. And so the way that we computed these was we used we used this formula. So we, we saw this formula from last time. So that's how we that's why that's how we obtain the index for the particular degree freedom for a given node. Okay. And we use the node number that we obtained from the connectivity matrix. Okay. So these four lines of code right here, you know, obtaining the connectivity information, understanding what's in the connectivity matrix, um, and then computing these IND variables, these, these index variables. It looks like there's not a lot going on, but there's actually a lot of really important stuff going on. And, and this is kind of the crux of the whole assembly algorithm that we have here. Okay. Um, any questions on, on this uh, on this part here? Okay. All right. But of course, you know, we don't we don't have that. And so for this for this particular um, you know example here, um, you know, our our uh, our system here is kind of a sequential system. So we have node one, you know, our element one is connected to nodes one and two, um, two and three. Element two is connected to nodes two and three, and element three is connected to nodes three and four. And so if we if we were to draw our matrix, right, it should actually look like this. And so there should be a block here, a block here, and a block here. Okay. So we should kind of have this diagonal structure just just because of how our connectivity matrix is set. You know, I want to do that example of one and three just to kind of illustrate kind of what these things do. Okay. So let's kind of come down in the, in the uh, here. Okay. So now that we have the locations, we need to insert the element stiffness matrices. And, and the way that I like to do this is I like to do it quadrant by quadrant. And the reason for it is this, and so if you look, if you look at the the way the element stiffness matrix is uh, um, is structured here, right? Everything in this top left quadrant here has to do with node one, node one. Right? So it's u one x, u one y, theta one, u one x, u one y, theta one. I use u here, but u is the same as, as d. Okay. Same thing with this quadrant here as well. So this is this is uh, node two, node one. This down here is node one, node two. And down here is no two, no two. Okay, so it so it's it's most convenient actually to kind of uh, assemble these in quadrant. And so let me let me show you in the code kind of how I how I did this exactly. Okay. okay, so now that we've obtained the indices, remember these indices are for the global the global system. I don't know why I wrote that down. It's, it's really just right there. Okay, so 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to obtain or retrieve the element stiffness matrix for this element. So that's that's what we just finished computing in the last move. Okay. And so this is how we're going to do it. And so we're going to I'm going to define a new variable here. So this this variable is called k underscore e. And so this k underscore e is going to be the element stiffness matrix for this particular element. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to retrieve it. And so remember this 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 data structure right here, this k element. That's kind of what we just finished doing with the element stiffness matrices. And so what this is going to retrieve is it's going to retrieve all the rows and all the columns, right? So you're seeing this colon, this colon, um, this colon uh, syntax here as well. And we're going to retrieve it for this particular element for IEL. Okay. So this right here is going to return KE. KE is going to be a six by six matrix. Okay. Six by six matrix for this, for this particular element. All right. So once we have that, uh, once we have that index, uh, or once we have that matrix, we're now ready to start assembling. So I have, I have this first section here. This is completely done for you already. Okay. All right. So notice, notice kind of the subtle differences here. And so on the one hand, I'm, I'm referencing K glob. So K glob here. This is our global, our global linear system. Okay. All right. Notice here that I'm using the update notation. So I'm saying k glob at ind1, ind1 is equal to k glob at ind1, ind1, right? So we're not we're not completely overriding what's there. We're just updating its value. We're just adding to whatever was there before, okay? And then to that, we're going to add the one one entry of our element stiffness matrix, right? So let me let me visualize this for you. So let's say that you know, let's say that this right here is our twelve by twelve global system, okay. And then right here we have our six by six matrix as well. Okay. I know the sizes aren't actually that different, but you know, I'm writing with a mouse here. It's it's hard enough. <laughs> All right. So what this is basically saying is that the entry at ind one ind one. Remember these are indexes in the global system. Okay. So in this particular case for node one, IND1, IND1 is going to be right here. Okay. So in the one in the row one, column one entry. Okay. This uh, we're going to add to this whatever was in the one one entry of the element stiffness matrix. Okay. So that gets inserted right there. Same thing here. And so next thing we're going to do is we're going to do IND1, comma, IND1 plus one. And so we're going to move one column space over. Remember in, in our matrix in our matrix notation the uh, the second entry is the column okay right to this entry we're going to add the one two entry of our element stiffness matrix okay so okay so so the code for this it it looks scary it looks it looks it looks like there's a lot going on but think but think about kind of your what you would do in the hand calculations in terms of assembling this, this matrix, okay? And so you would take kind of the corresponding entries, you would, you would draw out a, a space and you'd add the corresponding entries of the element stiffness matrix, you kind of match that up on top of the global system. So that, that's all that this is doing right here, okay? Okay, let me do kind of a random line here just to make it a little bit easier to, to kind of visualize. So let's, let's look at this line right here. All right, so we're going, we're looking at IND one plus one, IND one plus two. Okay, so that's going to be um, row two, column three. So that's going to be this one right here. Okay. To this, we're going to add the two three entry of the element stiffness matrix. So this one, um, well, this one right here. Okay. All right, so this so this part of the code here is you're just kind of matching up entries in the global system, and then you're adding the the entry in the element stiffness matrix uh, matrix in the appropriate spot of the global system. Okay. Okay, so this so this first part of the code here is is all done. Okay. So everything that I boxed here is is all done right here. Okay. I think the second the second one is halfway done. Okay. So we're going to do this kind of uh, we're going to we're going to do this kind of quadrant by quadrant, and so we're going to do this is the top left quadrant, this is the top right quadrant, okay, 
the top right quadrant of this matrix right here. And then we're gonna do the bottom left quadrant and then the bottom right quadrant, okay? So why don't you guys go ahead and, and I'll, I'll give you guys the next 10, 15 minutes and fill in kind of the next uh, portions of these code right here. And if you have questions, I'll, I'll raise your hand and I'll come, I'll come over. General question? Yeah. Yeah. That, um, could we have done a nested loop for all of that? You could have, <laughs> yeah. So uh, another way to do this would be kind of a, a nested for loop. Um, but I, I kind of broke it out like this just to make it a little bit easier to, to follow. So uh, so you can imagine that, you know, if you have kind of a, a, like another, you can actually have a triple loop in here. So you can actually have like a triple, uh, you know, a loop for the elements and then a loop over the rows and a loop over the columns. And you can really kind of compact this code into kind of a small portion. But I kind of broke it out like this just to make it a little bit easier to, to kind of follow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there is there is a lot going on to this part of the code. So if, if at this point you can just kind of recognize the patterns and kind of you know nail down the patterns, um, that's 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 honestly honestly pretty good for this part here. And then as you kind of you know do this more and you work on the homework assignment, then hopefully these these patterns become a little bit more clear. But just try to kind of understand kind of the patterns here, and then um, you know we'll 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 go from there. So if you notice kind of one thing that I, the reason I kind of started the, the top right portion here is because the top right portion is the first time where IND2 comes into play, okay? And so, and so you know, one thing that, one pattern that you should notice is that whenever I have IND1, right, IND1 corresponds to one on the element stiffness matrix, right? And then when I have IND1 plus one, that corresponds to two, IND1 plus two, that corresponds to three. So that's kind of what you saw in this top plot right here, okay? For IND2, ID two here get matched up with four on the elements on the element stiffness matrix, right? Because ID two that's where that's where no twos entries start, and so that's column four here and row four of the of the element stiffness matrix. Okay. So ID one corresponds to one. ID one plus one corresponds to two. ID one plus two corresponds to three. ID two corresponds to four. ID two plus one corresponds to five. IND2 plus two corresponds to six. And so it's 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 a it's a tongue twister, I know, but uh, you know if you kind of keep saying it to yourself, then it uh start to make sense out.
Uh, the, glo the global K is, is a matrix of zeros, right? Couldn't you just assign that to um, the individual values instead of adding them? You could on the first one, but when you have entries, when you have element stiffness matrices that overlap, you don't want oh, to overwrite what they're before. You just want to add to it. So this, oh, so this structure kind of say it kind of it kind of accounts for both okay. those situations. How's everyone doing? You still working on it? Good. Okay. Yeah. So, so the assembly part, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a lot going on. And I think you know when when you go to write your own trust code, um, this is probably going to be the part that I think trips, trips most people up is, is how to do the assembly for that because 
Um, you know, a trust element stiffness matrix is a lot smaller. So a trust element stiffness matrix is only four by four. Um, but, you know, you're going to have to adjust actually a lot of what you do in this portion here. So, you know, understanding the assembly part and, and making sure that it all kind of makes sense to you is, is really kind of key to this, this whole code. Right? Um, and honestly, you know, if you, if you want to kind of ask my honest opinion, this, this part here is more computer science more than, more than engineering. But, you know, finite elements is, is a code that's used a lot in engineering. So, you know, this is, this is probably as, as complex of an algorithm that we'll, that we'll, that we'll do in this course. Okay, but now that we're done with the assembly, um, from here it's actually pretty straightforward. So, or not straightforward, but you know, a lot less uh, typing to do. So, you know, I should be just be able to kind of talk through this, and then we'll we'll be able to get to the end. Okay, so now that we've assembled, um, if you think back to our, our normal direct stiffness process, the next step is assigning the boundary conditions, right? So that means the constraints or the Dirichlet boundary conditions, as well as the Neumann boundary conditions, which are the loads, okay? Okay, but the good thing is that we've already kind of set up most of our, um, you know, most of our, our, most of our work here, right? Because if you remember from last time, let me scroll up in the code right here, okay? We've already defined these data structures called DIRBC index. So remember, these are the rows in the matrix that we want to zero out, that we want to kind of apply a, a fixed constraint on, okay? And we did the same thing for the loads or the Neumann boundary conditions, um, as well as their values. And so this is these are the magnitudes. And so all we have to do here is basically just access uh, access all of these rows um, and and do the appropriate work and assign the appropriate um, you know numbers there. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the constraints. So let's start with the Dirichlet boundary conditions. And so you can see here that we have another loop, but it's a slightly different loop here. So we're not looping over all of the elements. Now, instead, we're looping over all of the boundary conditions. Okay, so however, however many boundary conditions that we're setting, uh, we're looping over them here. Okay. Okay. So um, as we're looping over these boundary conditions, we're going to retrieve the index for this boundary condition. Right. So whenever you see the word index, you know what I'm referring to there is basically the row in the global system that we want to apply this this to. Okay. Because if you think about our Dirichlet boundary conditions, you know. Part of that work involves, you know, um, putting zeros on every entry in that row, and then putting a one on the diagonal. Okay. And so, in, either, in order to do this, we need to know which row that we're replacing here, right? So that's what this index gives us. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to zero out this entire row, and so you can see here that we're um, we're kind of making another clever use of this colon notation, right? And so. If we use this notation here, so we say k global at ind, di, ind dir comma colon, this basically gives us access to that entire row. Okay, so the row that's set by the index, and then all the entries and all the columns. Okay, so we want to zero this out. So there's there's a very simple way to do this, uh, or I should say there's a hard there's a there's a more complicated way to do this. We, you can do this with the loops, or I think the easier way is just to set this equal to zeros. Right. And so we want to set this equal to a zeros row. So that means we're going to have one row. And the number of columns is going to be um, n nodes times three. Right. Um, n nodes. <laughs> right. Okay, so that creates, so by calling this, uh, calling this function here, this creates a zeros vector. So a vector of all zeros that has one row and the number of columns is the number of nodes times three, right? That corresponds to the fact that each node is gonna have three degrees of freedom, okay? Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to set the diagonal entry of this row to be one, okay? So we've, we've zeroed it out, we've, we've made the entire thing zeros, so now we're going to change the diagonal entry to one. So uh, for this, the diagonal entry is always the entry that's that has the same row and column. So we're going to do IND DIR, comma, IND DIR, okay? And then we're going to set this equal to one, okay? All right, 
And then the other thing that we'll make sure, well, so it is it is zero by default because we use a zeros function to define this F global, but it's always safe just to kind of zero it out again. So all I did for this last line here is making sure that the entry and the forcing vector uh, for this row is also equal to zero, okay? All right, so all this loop does is that it loops over each of our boundary conditions and that it zeroes out the row, puts a one on the, on the diagonal, and then it makes sure that the, uh, the entry on the right and the forcing vector is equal to zero. Okay. All right, any questions on this, on this loop here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, when it says length, Dirichlet boundary condition index, is mm -hmm. that, so would that be six? Exactly. In our... Yeah, so, so thanks, thanks for bringing that up. I, I should have mentioned this. So length, so length is a special command that you can, uh, that you can uh, input in MATLAB. And then the um, the argument or the input for the length command is is a, usually a vector, and so what this will do is that this will return how many entries are in that vector. So this will this will kind of adaptively kind of change based on how many um, rows that we want to zero. So let's say that we want to add another Dirichlet boundary condition. So let's say that we want to zero out five, four, five, six, right? And so now this vector has length nine, and so that length that length command will kind of automatically adapt to that. So our, however many entries that we have in this, in this vector. Yeah. So I do that. And so if, if you've kind of noticed one thing, though, so the way I've kind of designed this code is that, you know, past line 57, right? Everything line 57 and below, you know, we should never have to modify. So everything down here is, is kind of like, you can almost consider it to be kind of like the internal workings of like ANSYS, right? So in ANSYS, you know, you don't really question how it's working. You just, you just, you just kind of use it, right? And so everything that we're kind of writing kind of down here with the elements stiffness matrices and the assemblies and the boundary conditions, those should work, you know, always. Okay. The only thing that really changes for each uh, for each problem is the inputs. And so the uh, the geometry, the material properties, and the boundary conditions, right? And so that's what line 57 and above does. So I've designed this code in a way where like, if we if we make changes to the inputs, we make changes to this upper portion of the code, um, the rest of the code will automatically adapt to it and, and kind of give us the right solution from, from there, okay? Uh, so that's that's kind of the purpose of this link. Because, you know, for this problem, we could have very easily, just because mm -hmm. we know that we're gonna do six node or six degrees of freedom, we could have just put six right there, right? But, you know, we want this code to be adapted for all different types of problems. So that's why I use this, this link. All right, any other questions on, on this portion of the code here? Okay, all right, so next we have the Neumann boundary conditions and the, this is actually uh, even more simple. Okay, so because for, remember for the Neumann boundary conditions for the loads, um, you know, we don't need to, you know, we don't need to make any changes to the matrix. And so the only thing that we're changing here is the forcing vector, okay? Uh, but just like the Dirichlet boundary conditions, we need to know what row that we're affecting. And so that's I and D and I and EU. Okay. So I'm going to change this to I and D and EU. Right. And then the value or what we're going to put there is the load value. So that's given by Val and EU. Okay. All right. And so that, and that should fix that. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do here, so this so this part should probably be the most familiar to you guys. So we've, we've set up our global uh, stiffness matrix. Uh, we've set up our global forcing vector. And so now all we need to do is solve. So to solve, you've done this kind of many times before. We're gonna take K blob and backslash F blob, okay? All right, so we're solving our linear system of equations here that's given by our matrices. All right, so now everything's set. Um, and so granted that I didn't make any typos, this should run, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and run the code. I didn't hear ping, so that means there's no errors. Good. All right, so it ran without errors. And so if we looked at the solution, so the solution is given by u solve, okay? Right, and so these are the values that you should get for u solution. So you should get, you know, nodes one and nodes four, right? These are where the, the fixed constraints are being applied. So you can see that those are either zero or, or essentially zero. So something times 10 to the minus 15, minus 16. And then we have displacements on the X, on the node two and on node three, right? primarily in the X direction due to the horizontal force that we're, that we're being applied, okay? 
All right. Um, yep. Yeah, so that is the the code. Any any questions on just on this code overall? Okay. All right. So if you if you guys are having some issues with either the assembly or the element stiffness matrices, or you're getting errors, uh, just raise your hand. I'll I'll spend the rest of the class coming around. Um, if you're able to get a result, if you're able to get this solution, that's great. Uh, you can go ahead and get started on the on the next on the next assignment. Um, so for the next assignment, what I want you to do is I want you to create a new script, okay? And I want you to write basically an analogous code. So basically the same code as this, but for a 2D truss. So assignment, write a 2D truss code similar to our 2D Okay. Okay. So again, that's that's going to be due with the next ANSYS activity. So so you have 20 minutes in class a day to try it out. Um, if you're running into issues with the frame code, I'll go ahead and come around. But that's but that's all the content that I had for today. Um, so remember, Tuesday is the midterm exam. So please uh, make sure you guys are here in person for that. Um, and then next Thursday we'll do an ANSYS activity. So it, it'll be kind of like a little bit of a a, a jam packed week. So midterm and ANSYS kind of been in one. Um, all right. Um, oh, one thing, one thing I did want to mention. So I, I spoke with Dr. Myral today. So he is our graduate student advisor. Uh, so we wanted to remind everyone that if you're planning on taking the comprehensive exam this semester, then the application to apply for that or to let him know is due tomorrow. So um, I think he's getting a little worried because I think he's, he's expecting a lot more students to take the exam, but only a few people have signed up so far. So um, so if you if you haven't signed up yet if you haven't signed up yet and you're planning on taking the exam semester make sure you let him know uh, by tomorrow that you're going to do it okay if you have questions about how to do that just let me know I can I can give you his email address and everything okay all right any questions uh, any final questions on anything today before we wrap it up okay all right so the rest of the class today is just going to be uh, free work time and so uh, um, if you're having issues with the frame code just let me know. If not, you're free to kind of start the 2D trust code. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just know that it's going to follow a very similar structure as this. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of code that you can reuse. Um, if not, if you guys are heading out, then I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you guys enjoy your evening. And I will see you guys on Tuesday for the exam.
Um, well, you, um, I think the best way to test it would be to solve this uh, to make, make so to make up the wrong problem. You could, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think probably the easiest thing to do would probably use a previous right. homework problem if you have a solution to that. Okay. But 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 the idea with this code is that you could you could use it to come up with all your own trades of trust when you run to that will solve the code. So. Um, so yeah, you can make up your own. I think when you just when you're developing the code, it might be good to use a use a problem that you already know. Which sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What was the answer then? Uh, the answer solution is yeah. So this, so this, I, I, it, it looks about right, but then I, I need to actually double check it because this, um, I need to check it with the actual solution. So, because I was just writing this code off the cuff with you guys, so there, there might have been a typo in, in my code too. So, okay, this is what I got too. So, okay, I, okay, so. Once we both the same mistake, <laughs> it's possible. It's possible, but if we're both getting the same thing, that's that's probably this. You want to see the assembly for a film? Yes. Bottom. Oh, of course, yeah. I'll, I'll, I have I have the actual solution, so I'll post it. Uh, I haven't posted yet, but but feel free to take a picture. See you guys.
Have a good weekend. You too. Have a good weekend. Yeah, it might it might already be on Canvas actually. Let me see. Yep, it's already here. Yeah, so that's that's the full that's the full solution right there. Professor, for the uh, PD trust problem, did you want to make a code for one where uh, it, well, now I'm thinking about strings, uh, because uh, there's a horizontal uh, angle string. Yeah, it, it has to be yeah. an angle as well. All right. Yeah. So it's going to be a six by six again for the stiffness, ma stiffness uh, matrix? No, actually, for the 2D truss, it's only two, uh, four by four uh, because the, the truss doesn't have any rotation mm, in the freedom. Right. Yeah, so it's actually be quite, it's going to be quite a bit shorter than the frame yeah. code. So I wanted to do the harder one with you guys together and mm. the truss code. Well, the truss code, I'm, I'm not giving you a starter yeah. code. So, you know, I think that's going to be the hard part, yeah. figuring out the structure on your own. But the actual, like, you know, this part here is going to be a lot shorter because you know, your element stiffness matrix, instead of 36 yeah. months, 16 Same. instead. And then for the exam, is it just uh, one sheet front and back or yes. one, one sheet front and back? Front and back? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Or two sheets single sided if you need. But, All right. Um, but yeah, two. Yeah. You can, you can separate. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Too. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. See you guys. Have a good weekend. You too. Yep.